Um, well, good morning. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, um, thank the CBI. I think since uh, um, John Cridland's come in as Director General, he has been a huge champion of the creative industries. And you know, the creative industries represent uh, roughly about 6.4% of GVA. It's probably one of the very few sectors of the economy that are, are growing in real terms. And the CBI have been working with us and with other parts of the industry um, to see what other initiatives uh, can be made to ensure that uh, we as a sector grow. And clearly, training and apprenticeship and skills is one of those. Um, you probably know Pinewood uh, for films, the carry-on films, and uh, we've done 20 of the 22 Bond films. We seem to have done all the colon films this year. We've done X-Men colon first class. We've done... Uh, Captain America, colon, the first agenda. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, colon, part two. And Pirates uh, on Stranger Tides, colon, question mark. But it was just smaller films. Um, uh, Jane Eyre, which is out at the moment, and uh, with Judy Dench and uh, Woman in Black. Uh, and a lot of television, Dancing on Ice, Got to Dance, Big Light Entertainment. But the one area which you probably don't know is that we're actually home to 300 separate businesses of the creative industries. So we're like a science park, but in our, in our case, a media park. Businesses would have related to uh, film, television, and now very much to the computer games industry. So how did we sort of come to training and skills and apprenticeships? Um, well, we were, uh, we were given a task by the then Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport when the then government uh, published uh, Creative Britain. And in that document, they announced that they wanted to create 5,000 creative apprenticeships. Um, I'm not sure who they consulted at the time, because it's going to be quite a challenge. But um, uh, they spoke to us about it. it uh, Pinewood ha also has already uh, has an apprenticeship scheme, a group scheme, um, for carpenters and plasterers uh, and uh, um, electricians and so on. So we were asked. Uh, what we could do to actually look at creative apprenticeships. And um, I'll start by saying that there were so many people involved at the time that I'm sure we could have actually been nominated for the BAFTA Best Supporting Cast because we did have enough to make a certainly, well, probably more than a small budget film, certainly a medium-sized budget film. And there were literally a cast of dozens of people, all with best intentions. We wanted one and this was, our, this was our goal, we wanted one apprentice in drapes. And these are the people that make uh, all the curtains, all the upholstery, all the green and back cloths for, for the stages. And we had lots of discussions with DCMS, with uh, skills set, learning a skills council. Um, and we just could not get this one single apprenticeship off the ground. Because it wasn't one you could take off the shelf. And, and that was the problem. Everybody was trying. Um, and eventually, after two years, um, we managed to talk to, uh, and, and with, with a lot of help from DCS, I might add, uh, to uh, Nottingham, and they adapted an existing course in upholstery, and we then got our first drape apprentice. apprentice. But for us, you know, whilst you know, Pine is a, is a big brand, it's a small company. We've got a market capitalization of about 100 million. We've got 190 staff across three studios. So we're not a big company but we were determined. And I think it was the, uh, that determination and our experience that we thought, well, if we're having problems as Pinewood, how would our companies who are based on the lot, how would they actually uh, cope with this? So we set up the Pinewood Group Apprenticeship Scheme. Um, and effectively what we did was allow our name to be attached to the brand of apprenticeships. So working with the companies uh, on the lot, uh, we have been working with them to identify what their needs are, and we've actually handled a lot of the administration on, on their behalf. So, you know, for example, today we've got, I think at the moment, we've got about 14 apprentices ranging from sound maintenance, sounds electrician, business administration, gardening, uh, and uh, working with a variety of strategic partners. And I think that, for us, that was the real help, finding the right partner for the right course. Um, we've had tremendous support from Amersham and Wickham College, which is effectively, I treat as an extension of HR, 
uh, you pick the phone up to them and they, they actually sort things out for us. We have a very close working relationship, they're geographically nearby and they've been very, very helpful with us. Uh, also working again because we're in Buckinghamshire, uh, Bucks University, Pearson's, uh, we, we've just started an initiative with looking at one of their courses to adapt a, a facilities course to design for a studio management course because Pinewood is being asked to run other studios overseas and we're looking for studio managers. Um, and also with the National Film and Television School. Um, so that's really what we, we're doing at the moment. But our real challenge is um, tomorrow. Uh, we are subject to the government uh, looking at a, um, a planning application we have, which is going before them shortly. We are looking to set up the, um, and build the first living and uh, living and working community for the creative industries. And this is we're going to be building um, real, real streets from Venice, Amsterdam, New York, San Francisco, Prague, uh, Berlin, uh, Paris, and you're going to live there as well. We'll be using these for film, small budget film, television, for the advertising industry. But the challenge that, uh, that we want to throw down, and we have thrown down to government, is if we get permission for this, we're talking about 10,000 construction jobs over the uh, course of the, um, of the build. And what we're very keen to do, and we're already talking to some welfare to work providers, tomorrow's people being one of them, is how we can get people of benefits, particularly in the local community, Uxbridge and Slough, into training initiatives for the construction. But then, and this is the very clever bit, if I say so myself, we are establishing the first in Europe, a Screen Craft Academy. This will be built within Project Pinewood. It will be for 120 students. You'll be able to live there. It'll be for 20 foundation courses in the craft skills. And by craft skills, I mean plastering, carpentry, wig making, model making. The word skills time bomb is a very hackneyed phrase, but if you look, um, for those who've been down to Pinewood, you will know the demographics of those who are working on the sets it's white, middle-aged male. Despite all the initiatives from Film Council and others, there is zero <coughs> diversity. Not 1%, but zero. So it is important that we address this. Now, we as Pinewood, we don't actually employ the plasters and carpets as a freelance, so it's another challenge for us. But we decided that if we didn't have these craft skills in order to uh, facilitate these major productions such as Pirates of the Caribbean, X-Men, which are actually British in terms of have been made in this country. They're not, they're not done in Hollywood, they're done in this country. So we saw a business need, we predict a skills time bomb, and so we are building this academy. It will be run by the National Film and Television School and um, in conjunction with Skillset, and Skillset uh, are working with us very closely at the moment on, doing a, a, on another academy at the moment which will decant into this. But I think that um, having had uh, a rather difficult experience on looking at the um, friendships in the creative industries. Um, what it did allow us to learn, we learned very quickly, was to find the right kind of partner. Um, and those that we have found have been of a great help for us because whilst we're from a big business here today, we're actually probably a medium-sized business, let's say we're about a capitalization of 100 million. We have an HR department of two people, so to have this a strategic partnership and facilities uh, makes our life a lot easier. But there's some exciting opportunities ahead, and you know, we're certainly determined to, for our, if for no other reason, it will affect our bottom line. So that's another impetus to do it.